good to be back, man. Thank you, Lord. All right, would you stand to your feet, please? Grab your Bibles. Turn to the book of 2 Corinthians. 2 Corinthians chapter 4. 2 Corinthians chapter 4. If you don't know where that's at, it's right after 1 Corinthians. I'm excited to preach today. I'll try that again. I'm excited to preach today. And just look up here for a second. This message is for people whose lives, you just feel like an area of your life is under pressure. Uh, so if you're, if you're like rocking it in every area, like perfect relationships, perfect health, perfect job, perfect marriage, perfect kids, never have any problems, this, you might want to just, during the prayer, when we close our eyes and pray, you can just skip out, go to breakfast or something. But for the rest of us who are under pressure, God's got a word for you this morning. So I'm going to read the text, and then I'm going to pray for two things. I'm going to pray for God by his spirit to speak to us, and I'm also going to pray for peace in the nation of Israel. The Bible says in Psalm 122, verse 6, to pray for the peace in Jerusalem. We are living in very volatile times. You know that uh, there were 3,000 missile drone attacks uh, in Israel over the last 48 hours, and uh, things are shaky in the Middle East, and I'm so grateful that my life and our church is built on a firm foundation, that when the storms and the rain come and all hell breaks loose, that we're going to still stay standing because we don't build our lives on the sand, but on the rock, and His name is Jesus Christ, amen? All right, 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 7 but we have this treasure in jars of clay to show this, show that this all-surpassing power is from God and not from us. Let me just stop there. Uh, this is weird. Don't ever do this. But I've had people over the last 27 years ask me to sign their Bible. And you don't want to be rude, right? We'll say, hey, can you sign my Bible? And you, you don't want to be like, no, that's dumb. Um, so uh, you don't want to offend them or anything. But I'm thinking like, in the end, I'm like, why, why would you want me to sign your Bible? I'm like... I'm just a person. Like, who cares about me? And uh, so I, I've had to do it, I don't know, four or five times over the course of our church. And I always write uh, 2 Corinthians 4-7. When I, I, write, I sign it, then I, I put 2 Corinthians 4-7. Basically, I'm a jar of clay. You're, you're a jar of clay. We're, look at me. We're nothing. I know. You think you're amazing, and you have all these Instagram followers. And come on, just... Just encourage the neighbor next to you. Just say, you're, you're nothing. You're nothing. Don't be offended. But and it, we're, oh, Come on. We're just jars of clay, right? We're all jars of clay. Verse 8, we are hard-pressed, Paul says, on every side, but not, but not what? All hell's breaking loose, but I'm not crushed. I'm perplexed. I'm kind of confused, but I'm not in despair. I've been persecuted, but God hasn't abandoned me. I've been struck down, but not destroyed. We always carry around in our body the death of Jesus so that the life of Jesus may also be revealed in our body. Skip down to verse 16. Therefore, we do not lose heart. <laughs> this is not really encouraging. Although our outward body is wasting away. And if you're older than 50, can you say amen to that? <laughs> Isn't that true? Like everything hurts on me. Um, so our outwardly body is wasting away, yet inwardly, in our spirit man, we're being renewed day by day. For our light and momentary troubles, Paul says, are achieving for us an eternal glory that far outweighs them all. So we fix our eyes not on what is seen, but on what? Why? Because what is seen is temporary, but is what is unseen is eternal. Lord, thank you for the word of God, the people of God, the spirit of God. Bless your word. Bless the service. We pray that your will would be done. The kingdom of God would come and that your will be done in this service. And God, we do. We pray for the nation of Israel. We pray peace. 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 We come against the plans, the schemes of the devil trying to bring destruction to the Middle East. We declare the peace of God to rule and reign. God, in the midst of this war, in the midst of this battle, in the midst of this controversy, God, I pray that you would draw many people to Jesus. 
Let us hear testimonies of the goodness and the grace and the mercy of God. Jesus, be exalted, be lifted up over the Middle East. We pray for peace over the nation of Israel. In Jesus' name we pray. And everyone said amen. Amen. You may be seated there. How many have ever had your car fall apart? <laughs> Who do you call when the car falls apart? Mechanic, right? How many have ever had, like, your house fall apart? Who do you call? You call a contractor. Plumbing falls apart. You call a plumber. If your grades start going south, what do you do? You sit next to somebody really smart. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. No, you, you, you call a tutor. What do you do when your life falls apart? That's what's on the table this morning. I'm going to talk about what do you do when your life is under pressure? Everybody look up here. How many have ever, like, experienced in the last week or the last month or the last three months, last year, with your hand lifted? Have you ever felt like your life has been under pressure in some area of your life, financially, physically, relationally, emotionally? Yeah, encourage the person next to you. This is a safe place. I want to give you uh, three principles about what do you do when your life is under pressure. Let's talk about pressure. Everyone say pressure. Number one, write this down. With privilege, with privilege, what do you think comes with privilege? Good, good answer. With privilege comes pressure. Let's all say it together. Ready? With privilege comes pressure. Let me say it again. With privilege comes pressure. You wanted the new position, but you didn't realize the new position came with, I can't hear you, came with, you wanted more influence. How many know that having more influence comes with more pressure? Uh, my my son, Ryan, he, he was a pitcher in high school. He was a pitcher in college. And uh, we, we loved going to his games, and we hated going to his games because he was a pitcher. And because uh, the pitcher, look at like a quarterback, has all the pressure on him. And so he, he's throwing, he, he's, and so we loved to watch him play, and we loved to watch him compete, and we loved to support him. But we hated the pressure of sitting in the stands there was this really sweet lady. She was really, I really did like her, but she was just real volatile, loud, and she would always be like, come on, Ryan, throw strikes, Ryan, and then he would throw a ball, and she's like, Ryan, come on, Ryan, it was like a whole game, Ryan, and then he would walk, a, he would walk some, and she's like, Ryan, and I'm like, yeah, your kid's out in right field picking daisies. Maybe one ball might go to him the whole game. He's got no pressure, and all the pressure's on my son. He's got the weight of the game, the weight of the parents, and the weight of his teammates. True or false? And I mean, with privilege comes, say it with me again, comes what? Pressure, pressure, pressure. Um, on Easter, we had, we, we had a little get-together uh, after church, and we had lunch, and my niece came up from San Diego. She's got three kids, and she's got a little, uh, how old is Colton, 10? 10, 10 years old. He'll be 10. And uh, so I, I'm going to come down on the floor. I came up to Colton. He's almost 10. I said, hey, you ever get picked on at school? And he's like, yeah. And I said, well, let me kind of, I'll, I'll do this to Frank. And uh, I, I said, I want to teach you a little pressure point. So it's not going to hurt. And uh, I wasn't hurting you. You're way bigger than me. And uh, so I'm going I'm to, so when you get bullied at school, there's going to be a little pressure point. So see that little muscle right there? See <laughs> That hurt, doesn't it? Why did, oh, <laughs> right there. See that? It's a little pressure point. You see that? And uh, I said, and if you get bullied at school, you just come up to the kid and you go like this. And he's like, ah, ah. And uh, I said, it hurt, huh? And he goes, yeah, that hurt. And uh, I, he goes, show me again. So I, I showed him again this, this pressure point. And uh, I said, I'm going to do it again. I'm not going to do it hard this time, but I'm going to do it again to show you where the pressure point is. And, and he goes, and he said this, he said, uh, can you tell me what level it's going to, like, uh, how, how bad is it going to hurt? Like, what level on a, a scale of one interpretation? I want to know when you push on my muscle there, how bad is it going to hurt? And uh, how many have ever wanted to ask God that? Hey, God, on a scale of 1 to 10, I'm about to go through this, and I want to know how much pressure is it going to be? Two, is it going to be five? I'm going I'm to go through this. And uh, with privilege, come on, with privilege comes what? I can't hear you. Comes what? Comes pressure. Come on, you didn't know when you had the baby that having the baby came with, and if you would have knew how much pressure, you might have stayed celibate. How many know with kids comes, with marriage comes 
With influence comes, come on, with a new position comes. You want to start a business? You got a dream? You got an idea? I mean, with that new dream and idea, with that new business comes pressure. And in 1990, Tam and I were youth pastors at South Coast Fellowship, and we were there for seven and a half years. And then God told us to start a church in Oxnard. And, uh, and it was great over there. We loved youth ministry, and we saw some success in youth ministry. And we got a paycheck every two weeks. And we had health insurance, and we had benefits, and we enjoyed what we were doing. Not a lot of pressure. And then when God spoke to us about starting the church, in 1997 with 40 people, tremendous what? Because now we're like, we got three little babies, four, two, and three months old, and we, we had to get insurance, and there's a lot of pressure to build a church because you're not sure if you're going to get a paycheck. I mean, with any new dream, any new business, any new responsibility comes. And notice what Paul says in verse 8, we are hard-pressed on every side. Hard press means narrow, closed in, cramped. I'm a big UFC guy. I love UFC. Don't judge me. Don't send me any of me. How many like UFC? These are the real. And I watched all the fights, almost all of them. I did, had to go to bed uh, before the, the final fight, but I love UFC. And they'll tell you that if, if you want to control the fight, you got to control the center of the state, uh, the, the cage, right? And uh, if you start getting backed up against, against the fence, you're going to lose control. And uh, there's going to be a whole lot of pressure on you. Notice Paul says, I've been pressed on every side. Frank, I need Frank, Eddie, I need Mike, and Caden. Come up on the stage real quick. Set your Bibles there, all four of you, okay? Notice Paul says, these are four good-looking guys too, man. <laughs> Just stand over here for a second. Excellent. And they're all single. Anyhow, <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. So notice what Paul says. He says, Frank, you can come out here. Everybody else just stay right there. He says, first, he says, I'm pressed on what? What is it? On every side, right? On every side. And it's not just like, it's not just that like physically I'm getting challenged, that I've been diagnosed, I'm going through an injury, I've got diabetes. I mean, you can probably handle that. Okay, just go ahead and stand right there. So it's not just, and then, but then, so not just one side, but then he says, I'm getting, not only am I getting physically attacked, and I, I feel under pressure. You know what I'm saying? It's not just physically, but then, man, now I got people coming at me. And, and I can handle one. It's, it's a little more challenging to, to bump up against not only some physical things, but then people. You ever been pressured by people? And then Mike here. So it's not just physically. Come on, square, square it up. Square, yeah, yeah. So it's not just physically. It's not just People, but now, man, I, I'm getting pressed at my job, and my boss is driving me insane, and, and uh, you know what I'm saying? And I, I, over here, Caden, and then you're here, and here's what Paul says. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Here's what Paul says. Now, um, he says, I, I'm pressed what? On every side. And notice that not only is he pressed, now they're coming in closer. You ever felt like that? It's like from, from all different sides, I'm feeling the press, you know what I'm saying? Give these guys a hand. Excellent job. Excellent. He says, I'm hard pressed on, on every, every side. You ever notice sometimes in preaching, I'm, I'm looking for, I don't know, affirmation or an amen from this section? And I, and, and I don't get it just like that. So then I'll go, I'll go over here to this section, to this side. And sometimes I might not get it from this side either. I didn't get it from that side. I didn't get it from this side. Sometimes I'll come to the middle. And sometimes, I don't get it from either side. So I, I got to look back here to the Lord who is my rear guard, and, uh, and I'll get the affirmation and amen, or I'll look to my wife and get it from there. You know, Paul, he says, I'm being pressed from all sides. Again, I can handle one side. I can handle if it was just getting pressed in my body. I, I, can, be, I, I can handle if it was just people that were coming in, but he says, man, I'm getting pressed on all sides, and with privilege comes pressure. He says, I'm perplexed, but not in despair. By the way, look up here. First. That's why you never want to minimize what someone else is going through. Because you, 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 you could look down at a teenager and say, come on, get over, come on, she broke up with you. Just get, it, get over it. It's not a big deal. But how many know it's a big deal to a 16-year-old? 
or a 13-year-old kid that's getting bullied at school. Come on, they don't have the maturity to handle the pressure at 13 or 14. They don't have the, they don't have the integrity to, to walk through that process. So we don't ever want to look down on people that are being pressured and say, well, I wouldn't get pressured by that. Now, Paul says, no, no, I'm perplexed, but notice, I'm, I'm not in despair. Perplexed, confused. I don't, look at me, I don't know where to go. I don't know what to do. You ever felt like that? Now, all the illustrations about getting lost kind of go out the window now that we have GPS. <laughs> but come on, how many have ever still got lost with GPS? Yeah, yeah, me too. Yeah, yeah. And uh, but that's what Paul says. Sometimes I don't, know, I don't know what to do. I'm perplexed. I don't know. Should I take this job? Should I move here? Should I, should I go to that school? Should I, should I marry that person? And he says, I'm, perplexed, I'm confused. And how many have ever used GPS walking? We were in Italy four or five years ago, and it, you got to walk like 18 miles before you find out that you're not going in the right direction, right? <laughs> At least in a car, you can find out pretty quick. That's what Paul said. He says, I'm confused. I'm perplexed, but I'm not in despair. We first started the church, look at me for a sec. And people would come to me, and they, they still do, but they would say like, hey, Pastor Steve, I had a dream, and uh, I need you to interpret it. Or... I'm working at this job, and I'm not sure if I should, and I always felt, I felt, listen, I felt the pressure to give them an answer. I had this dream about a cow on the side of the road that was, pastor said, what does the Lord say? I'm like, I used to try to like make up stuff. I don't know. (laughs) Because people think like pastors are supposed to have the answer for everything. You know what I say now? I don't know. (laughs) I don't know what your, I don't know about the cow. I have no idea. I, I don't know where you should move. I don't know what job you should take. I'll, I'll pray with you, but I don't have all the answers. People are like, well, pastors should have all the answers. And I, I would say, no. Paul, Paul said in, the, in Corinthians, first Corinthians, he says, we, how many know we see in part, we know in part? In the book of Acts, several, I think three times it said, they said, we, we think we should go here. It seemed right to us and the Holy Spirit. I know that, that's how we live our life. It, just, it seems like the right thing to do. It seems right. I don't, I don't have a clear vision on every the single thing in my... So he says, I'm perplexed, but I'm not in despair. How I many know his ways are not my ways? Verse 9, he says, I'm persecuted, but not abandoned. Struck down, but not destroyed. Persecuted means to be pursued or chased. How many have ever had a dream where you were, somebody's chasing after you? Running you down like an angry Raider fan. <laughs> and... And it was like you couldn't get away, like your feet were in concrete. That, that's what Paul's saying. I, I was being persecuted. I was being chased down. But here's the good news. I struck down, but not, not destroyed. Here's, look at me. Here's what I've learned about pressure. A couple things. Number one, God allows pressure into our life to eliminate, listen, the pride in our life. Sometimes God, God will allow pressure in my life to eliminate pride. Here's the second thing. God allows the pressure in my life, and the reason, listen, the reason why we have pressure is because we made a dumb decision. That's why we're under pressure. We, t- look at me, we told you not to date her. She's crazy. <laughs> and you went ahead and did it anyhow. Now you feel the pressure of the relationship. We tried to tell you. We told you not to marry him. He's lazy. We told you not to buy the car. You're working at Popeye's Chicken making $18 an hour. You got a $750 a month payment. No wonder why you feel pressure. You should have never bought the car. Would someone say amen? Amen. So God allows the pressure to eliminate pride. But secondly, we're just under pressure because we do dumb things. How many ever heard that quote, pressure makes diamonds? You ever heard that? Let's all say it together. Pressure makes, it's true, isn't it? But pressure also makes you do stupid things. Pressure also leads to divorce. Pressure also leads to you possibly losing your virginity. Pressure can lead to you buying a timeshare that you have no business buying. True or false? So it, pressure, if not handled correctly, can do a whole lot of things. Pressure, pressure, pressure. Someone say pressure. Number one, with privilege comes what? Here's the second thing I see in the text. There's a purpose in my pressure. There's a purpose. It's not random. It's not arbitrary. You might want to write this down. Pressure, pressure is not a destination. It's transportation. Let me say it again. Pressure is not necessarily a destination. 
It's a transportation. God's bringing you. How many know that God gave Joseph a dream? And then he had this awesome coat, the coat of many colors. He had an awesome dream from God. He had an awesome coat that he was wearing. But how many know he was also in a pit? So sometimes the pressure gets us to a pit. Pressure, pressure. This is really weird. Um, we had four Easter services. How many were at one of the four services? Wow. You know how, you know, like I'll walk out at the end of the song, I'll walk out, and then kind of the same time the, the pulpit comes out. We have awesome people to come and set this up. I don't know what, it, it was one of the, it was either the first or second service on Sunday morning. I walked out, and it was, it must have been the 10, 15, it was packed. And I walked out, and they brought the pulpit out, and I just had this really strange feeling. And here was the feeling. All these people took time out of their schedule to be here, and I felt this weird pressure to perform. It's like, man, you got to don't waste their time, Steve. And then I, I was just, it was just like the Lord said, hey, I, I never called you to perform. He said, I called you to preach the word of God. And as quick as the Lord said that, the pressure just went away. And I was free to preach. <laughs> hey, I want to ask you, what is it for you? What is it for you? How, how do you feel like you're just under pressure? Pressure in a relationship, pressure at your job, pressure, pressure to succeed. How I many you know sometimes... It's not even the pressure of losing something. Sometimes it's the pressure to maintain something that's going well. A pressure to fulfill a dream, to graduate, to fill in the blank, to live to a higher standard. The pressure of a custody battle, of a court appearance coming up. The enemy will always remind you who you used to be, what you can't do, where you fall short, who left you. Notice in verse 16, he says, therefore, we don't lose heart. We don't lose heart. We're not going to get weak. We're not going to give up. We're not going to throw on the towel. Verse 17, our light and momentary troubles. Look at that. Verse 17, our light and momentary troubles, trials, pressure, bills, teenagers. That was funny. <laughs> are, notice this. Are achieving. You might want to underline that. Are achieving for us. There it is. Purpose. Achieving for us an eternal glory that far outweighs them all. Achieving for us means there's a pressure. It's not, I'm under pressure, but it's for a reason. It's not for nothing. The reason why I'm under pressure, listen, because the next time I'm faced with a, a trial, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to succeed in the trial. Check it out. I'm in, under pressure now. I'm going to be smart, smarter next time. I'm going to be stronger next time. I'm going to be more patient next time. I'm going to be wiser next time. It's not a mistake. I'm going through what I'm going through. It's going to benefit me. It's going to achieve for me what God wants to achieve in my life. Look at this slide up here. I'm going to let you see this slide coming up. I want us to say the word together. Say it with me. One more time. What is it? Sometimes I feel under pressure. Now, I want you to see this next one. Pressure. Press. Sure. Press. Sure. Here it is. I'm under pressure, ready? But I'm sure. I'm sure Philippians 1 6 is true. I'm sure that he who has begun a work in me will complete it until the day of Christ Jesus. I'm, look at me. I'm sure that what I'm going through, the sufferings of this world, can't be compared to the glory that shall be sh revealed. I'm sure. Someone say, I'm sure. I'm sure that what the enemy meant for evil, I'm sure that God will what? He'll turn it around for good. I'm, I'm sure. In the middle of the pressure, I am sure that God is on my side. I, I'm sure that God's using it for my maturity and for his glory. I, I'm sure. I'm sure. I'm positive. I'm, I'm sure that the pressure that I'm going through, come on. I'm, I'm sure. I'm sure that his plans, Jeremiah 29, 11, for me or to prosper me, to give me a future and a hope, I'm, I'm sure. Someone say, I'm sure. Verse 18, so we fix our eyes, not on what is seen, but on what is unseen, since what is seen is temporary, but what is unseen is eternal. You know, the devil wants you to look at the pressure and the problems that you're under. And verse 18 says, come on, just tilt your head. It says to look, fix our eyes on who? God, we, just, we fix our eyes on you, not on the pressure. 
We fix them on you, Lord. Forgive us for fixing them on ourselves or on other people or our problems, but God, this morning anew and afresh, we, we fix them on you. I feel led just to sing. I'm not going to do it, though. Turn your eyes upon Jesus. Look full in his wonderful face. And the things of earth will grow strangely dim in the light of his glory and grace. Lord, we just look to you. We know that the pressure that we're under is going to achieve for us good and glory. So there's a purpose, Lord. Thank you. That the pressure that we're under right now, Lord, there's a purpose that's achieving for us. We give you thanks for that, Lord. Here's the third thing. Number three, God's power is released in my pressure. God's power is released in my pressure. He says in verse 10, we always carry around in our body the death of Jesus so that the life of Jesus may also be revealed in our body. I think what Paul's referring to is the Garden of Gethsemane. In the Garden of Gethsemane, Jesus is praying. He knows he's going to the cross and he's praying, Lord, if this cup can pass from me, I I, I don't want to go do this. I I will do this, but I I don't want to go through it. Too much pressure. You know, the the Garden of Gethsemane, it actually means, it's like an olive press. That's what it actually means. Check it out. He's in the Garden of Gethsemane, and he's being pressed. Ready? Ready? He's in a beautiful place, a garden, and he's getting You ever experienced that? You ever been in a beautiful place, feeling pressed? It's the the man at the gate, beautiful, Acts chapter 3. He's at a beautiful place, but he can't walk. I got a beautiful home. We just, all the upgrades, but it's it's a great house. It's not a home. I got a great job. It's my dream job, but it's a toxic environment. My boss is demanding, and my coworkers are manipulative, and I've got a beautiful thing going on, but it's a terrible situation. But I love that, that in, in the pressure of our life, God, God's power is felt so strong. Verse 7 again. But we have this treasure in jars of clay to show that this all-surpassing power is from who? God and not from us. To show, to reveal, to display. How many have ever heard this uh, little phrase? God will get, never give you more than you can handle. How many have ever heard that? Okay. Not true. You're like, amen, print. No, not true. We take it out of context. He never said he would never give us more than we can handle. What, what, what the verse says that in temptation, God will give us a way of escape. But he never says he'll never give you more than you can handle. Often he'll give you way more than you can handle. Why? So you and I have to be driven to him to prove that you can't handle it. Why? So we understand that it's not my power, my wisdom, my anointing, my gifting, my ability. It's the all-surpassing power of Jesus Christ. And check it out. When you feel pressure, you can tap into the all-surpassing power of Jesus Christ. Go back just a couple chapters and notice what Paul says in 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 8. 2 Corinthians 1, 8. We don't want you to be uninformed, brothers and sisters, about the troubles, trials, pressure we experienced in the province of Asia. Here it is. We were under what? Under what? Great pressure. Far beyond our ability to endure. So Paul's not saying, hey, God never gave us more than we can handle. No. We were under so much pressure, we couldn't even handle it. We couldn't endure it. So that we despaired, we wanted to kill ourselves. But in verse 9, indeed, we felt we had received the sentence of death. But this happened that we might not rely on who? What does the text say? On who? Ourselves. But on who? Who raised us from the dead. Who has delivered us from such a deadly peril. And he will deliver us again. On him we have set our hope that he will continue to deliver us. He says, no. We were under so much pressure, we wanted to die. But what it did, it drove us to rely on God's power, not on our power. You know, there's a fundamental difference between high jumping and pole vaulting. 
You watch the high jumping in the Olympics, they might, I don't know, they might jump seven feet. I think the record's like 7'10", 7'11". But pole vault, you, get, you ever see the pole vault? It's dangerous. They come running down. Same thing, same mat, same bar, except now you're not relying on your own strength to jump. Now you put the pole in the ground and that pole can catapult you, not just seven feet or eight feet or 12 feet, even fit, it's like over 20 feet. Same mat, same bar. But now they're relying on the strength of the pole. Now we're relying on the strength of the Lord. It's his all surpassing power that comes from him and not from us. You know what? You ever been on an airplane and you know, we get to 30,000 feet? You know, they have to pressurize those planes. You wanna know why? Because we weren't built and created to breathe at 30,000 feet. We were meant to breathe, created to breathe at sea level. So they have to pressurize the cabin so when you go up 30,000 feet, you don't die. I mean, God allows the pressure in our lives. He pressurizes our life because he wants us to fly at higher heights than what we're doing right now. And so he allows the pressure. He allows the pressure to drive us to his power and not to rely on ourselves, but to on God. I'm going to sit down here. Is that okay? Thank you. So I was putting the message together. I just really felt like there's some people in the room that are, are watching online. You're just really under a tremendous amount of pressure. It could be on your job. It could be in a relationship with your kids, your finances. I believe that God gave me this word for, for you. You're just, you're under pressure. Again, with privilege comes pressure. So God, God's allowing the pressure to come because he wants you to be driven to him. But he, he is your source. He is your solution. He is your way of escape. Paul says, I'm, we are under a lot of pressure. How, how, you don't need to lift your hand, but just, just nod to me if you feel like, man, I'm, I'm under a lot of pressure right now. Yeah. And, and let me just say this. You and I weren't designed to carry, to handle, to manage the pressure. He never intended for you to carry the pressure. He allows the pressure because he wants the pressure to be driven to his power. But you're not, you're not supposed to maintain it. You're not supposed to manage it. You're supposed to turn it over to him. And I was thinking about, I was thinking about Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. I mean, under tremendous pressure to bow to the false gods. And I love this in the book of Daniel. You can read it later. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, under a lot of pressure, they said, no, our God's able to deliver us. Nebuchadnezzar, our, our God's able to. I mean, that's our conviction, by the way. Our, our God can get out of this mess. Our God can turn our marriage around. Our God can bring back our wayward kids. Our God can provide finances. Our God can heal our body. How many people, that's our conviction. So he says to Nebuchadnezzar, our God, our God is able. That's our conviction. He's able. In the middle of the pressure, God is able to get me out of this. But then it goes on to say, even if he doesn't. Now, our conviction is he will and he can. But even in God's sovereignty, if it doesn't work out the way that I thought it should work out, he says, we're still not going to bow to the pressure. And listen, and we can't either. I believe, I believe God's going to set some people free. I believe God's going to do some miracles. I, I believe that you're, you're just under this intense pressure in your life right now, in your finances, in your relationships, in your job, in your parenting. Single, single mom, single dad, trying to raise a couple of kids on a fixed income. Tremendous pressure, tr tremendous pressure to make a big decision about taking another job, about moving to another state. You're under pressure, pressure. And I believe I'm going to hear testimony after testimony after testimony that God's using the pressure in your life to draw you to his power. And it's the all-surpassing power of God that's going to set you free. Stand to your feet, would you? Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah.
get the worship team out here, please? Thank you. Would you bow your heads just for a second, just privacy for those around you. Lord, thank you. Thank you, thank you for your all-surpassing power. Come on, if that's you this morning, you're just, you're like, man, this, this message is for me, this sermon is for me. I just feel a tremendous amount of pressure. Just go and lift up your hand right now. I want to pray for you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Pressure, 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 Lord. You see the hands, Lord. Amen. Here's what I want to do. If you have your hand lifted right now, would you come to the front? I just want you to come to the front. God's going to touch your life right now. Come on, all over this building. All over the building. Just press into the Lord right now. Press into the Lord. Come on. 